Hello everyone, my name is Dee Dee Butler and I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, 30-Minute Training Time-Saving Tools Feature Editor. Your host today is Ann Gower. Ann is a geologist with our technical services group and provides consulting and training services to the North American region. A few things before we get started. First, today's webinar will conclude with a question and answer session, so please feel free to write questions in the panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Also, you will receive a link to a recording of this webinar by email in case you'd like to see it again. It will also be available on the MapTech website at a later date. I'll now hand it over to Anne. Thanks, Dee Dee. So today we're going to talk about features. First of all, what is a feature? A feature is a set of attributes such as a line type, color, or pattern that can be applied to a new or existing object. Features can be used in common CAD practices to speed up your workflow and ensure that attributes such as your modeled or mapped data is consistent throughout the mine, which can be very helpful later down in your workflow. Today we're going to be talking about creating your own features, using and applying features, importing data using features, and even creating toolbars or menu options connected to the features. Let's jump to Vulkan. In this example here, we have features applied to these polygons. If I click on any of these polygons, they have a specific color, line style, layer name, or, and feature associated with them. And they have been created through, through the features. All right, so let's go to creating our own features. Design, Feature Edit, Feature Editor. I have features already created in my list here, but let's try creating some new ones first. So I'm going to go to the new option. Let's name this one feature one. We'll put a description in so that when we see it in the panel, we know what it's doing. Feature one points. Everything in this menu option allows us to create what we want. All right, so the, at, the attributes that we're going to create in this case are points, lines, or polygons. In this case, we'll create some points. Every time I create a new point, or every time I create a new object, I'm going to create points. I can force a layer, a specific layer. This time we'll call it feature one. And we'll force a description just called feature one as well. You can also prompt or force or just keep as current for the object name, object description, and other attributes. In this case, we're just making points, so I'm going to force a color for these points to be red. I'm going to prompt for a group. The prompt for my group is going to be group name. And then when it comes up on the screen when I'm digitizing, it will actually give me that prompt and I'll fill, fill it in as I digitize. I can also choose an object value, point sequence, specific point attributes such as X, Y, Z, point W tags. And I can even prompt or force an, a point name. We can digitize within a specific gradient. You can digitize within a specific input mode. And you can even now label the point markers. So as you're digitizing, the first option will let you see the points as you digitize and it will remove it once you're done digitizing. The second option will show you the points and keep them on the screen as if you were labeling the points. We are creating points for this option, so we'll leave that off. So we'll save, and there's two ways we can digitize. The first way I'll show you is through the panel. So I'm going to use digitize here, and here's my prompt. So it's going to prompt me for my group name. So I'm going to call this group 1. We'll say OK, and as I digitize, all of these points are considered as group 1 points. If I right-click, it's going to give me a new prompt again for my next object. So I'll call this group two. Say OK. And create my group two points. And I'm going to cancel to go back to the panel. 
So I'm going to save here. And if you notice too, these points are red. Right now, my current color is green. They're red because I've digitized them from the panel through the feature op option here. And I didn't need to go to create point either. It automatically knows from me selecting create points that I'm creating points, that those points are going to be red, and that they're forced into a layer called feature one. Now, once I exit this panel, we'll actually see that layer exist here. But before I exit, I'm going to create one more feature. Uh, feature. This time, I'm going to base it off of this same feature, and so I'm going to use the Save As option. We're going to call it Feature 2, and we'll change it accordingly. This time, we're going to create polygons. So every time I use this feature, it's going to create a closed polygon. We'll force this into a layer called feature two. This time I'm going to get rid of the object group and I'm going to force a pattern and a line style as well. I'm going to also apply the object value for the point Z elevations. So with that, I need to go back to object value and prompt for a Z elevation. So I could either type in Z elevation or bench elevation here. And that's going to be my prompt. So every time I digitize a new polygon, it's going to ask me for that data. So I'm going to save here, and I'm going to actually just exit out of the panel. There's my new feature one from before, so I'll save that. And to create this, I can go to create the other feature, I can go to design create feature, choose feature two, and press OK. Now it's prompting me for my bench elevation. So I'm going to draw on bench 210. If I say OK, and I exit section mode here, so right now I'm in indicate mode. 205, we'll say. So I'm in the indicate mode, and I digitize my polygon. I'll just digitize one for now. Even though my Z elevation at the top of my screen is at zero, if I take a look at where that is in elevation, it should be at the same elevation that my points are at, 205, which is where I digitized them in section view earlier. All right, so now we're going to move on to applying these features. So I'm going to get into section view, and I have these polygons that have Right now, they're just our regular map tech green color. Someone has gone through and digitized them, but didn't apply any specific colors, patterns, or line styles to them. So I'm going to use the features that I have to apply them. So I'm going to go back to Design, Feature Edit, Feature Editor, and I know that we have a vein, vein in the middle. So I'm going to use apply here by object and select my two vein polygons. I'm going I have a dike on the east side that I'm going to apply the features to. And I have Precambrian polygons surrounding that. to also use those features. All right, so right now all of those polygons are in a layer called Apply. Once I apply these features and I press OK, all of them should be in their own respective layers. We still have something in that Apply layer. Right now you can see by the little picture that shows up, it's that fault. So even though that fault is colored blue, I will need to apply that layer 
to save it into the correct layer. So feature edit, feature editor. If I go back to fault, I can use the apply option again to apply the fault to be in the correct layer as well. So now apply should be gone after this and faults should be filled in with that new layer, that new line. There we go. The other option too is if I take a look at my map in full, so I have three elevations of mapped geology. I, so that means I have six different polygons of my vein. I could go through and right click, go to properties, and change the attributes of all those to be the right color. Or because they're already featured out, I can go to design, feature edit, go back to the editor, go to vein, and maybe I want my vein color to be um, red, we'll say. So I'm going to save that here. And when I use bulk apply, I'm going to apply this feature to the loaded objects that are already called vein. So I'll say OK. And now those veins are going to be red as well. So it's an easy change to a lot of objects at one time. So next I'm going to show you how we can import data using the features. So right now I have a CSV that has the name of each object in the first column, the feature name, and the X, Y, Z of each point in those objects. If I go to File, Import, Design Strings, and I grab my new file, I'll name it under a new layer called New As Built, and, I'm, and I have a specification called Features Webinar. Now I can call on my X, Y, Z points, the name of each object, the object records. This is the key part, is that we're using that feature code. So column two holds the feature code, and I'm going to apply the feature point connections. So when I hit finish and OK, they should be a specific color and line style. However, right now we're getting our usual map tech green and they're all points. So what happened? If we take a look at our features, our features are called, uh, they don't have rib, back, or floor in them. So I have a little toolbar here that I'm going to use to grab my survey features. So now if I go to features, I have my specific back, floor, and rib features. So I'm going to delete this and go back into my import option. In that second column, use finish here and OK. And now I can see that it's applied my feature types. So polygons for the ribs and then points for the back and the floors. And then everything is their own specific color. And now as an underground surveyor, I can create those shapes or those solids really easily because they've been grouped out as back, rib, and floor points, even though they're under one layer. So the last bit that I'm going to show you is how we can uh, create these simple toolbars to call on specific feature files. So sometimes at MindSites you have multiple feature files. If you're mapping maybe in the field, you're going to have alteration features and geology features and different survey features. So you can call on those features by going to Design, Feature Edit, Default, and then go to Browse. And I have different feature files here. By default, when you open up Vulkan, it's going to read your DG1 project prefix feature file, which is, in this case, SHA 
.ftd. If you wanted to have separate feature files, you can name them separately, that, and they'll have different lists of features. So I've created this feature file called geology. So I'm going to take a look at how we can connect that to a toolbar or a menu option. So first we need to make a macro. The macros are under file macro create. We'll call this macro geology. And make sure that we're using interactive on macro mismatch. Now everything that we do is going to be reading through the menu option. So we need to go to design, feature edit, default. Make sure we call on that geology feature file and press OK. And I want to see it where it brings up the menu for me every time I want to digitize a geology type. So I'm going to go to design, create, features, and now I have the panel. I'm going to stop it here. However, you could create a new macro for each feature type that you're trying to digitize. So I'm going to stop it there and I'll close these. I'm going to go to Workbench, Customize. The toolbar that I created earlier with the same idea was the Survey toolbar. So I created that here. However, we can create a menu option as well. I started a new menu called Field Mapping. I already have one type called Alteration in there. So I'm going to find that script under Lava Scripts, go to Project Scripts, and I have a script called Geology, which is that macro that I just created. So I'm going to drop and drag that under Field Mapping, press OK, and save. Now if I go to User Menus, I go to user menus, field mapping. Now I have my alteration and my geology field mapping. So if I want to digitize something in alteration, it'll bring up all my alteration types. If I wanted to jump to my other feature file, I can go to the geology types here. It allows me to easily access those different lists. So that concludes my section of the features webinar. Thanks, Anne. As I mentioned before, please write in any questions through the panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Let's see if we have any so far. What is the difference, again, between bulk apply and apply? Good question. Bulk apply is when you have polygons loaded on your screen that have already been designated as specific features. If you change something on the feature editor, you can bulk apply to features that are either loaded on your screen or are in your DGD, whereas apply is just giving you that select by panel, and it will let you select by object, layer, feature, or group to apply those specific features to those objects. Great. Thanks, Anne. If you have additional questions, please feel free to contact Anne directly or email support at maptech.com. Um, on behalf of the entire MapTech team, thank you for attending. We hold a different webinar each month, so please visit maptech.com to view the entire schedule. Thank you, and have a great day.